from Indonesia. Gee, in Australia it's so cold and rainy at the moment compared to tropical sunny Indonesia. Did you know that Indonesia is a cluster of islands, about 18,000 islands actually, and 10,000 of them have no name. The Indonesian flag is red at the top and white at the bottom. The red represents human blood, Ooh. and the white represents human spirit. What a Java's government is a monarchy and has a lot of past leaders, but I'll just mention one. By the way, some of Java's past leaders are believed to be mythical in the fact that there is no definite proof that they aren't just made up. Sunun Gunung Jati lived from around 1448 to 1568. And although he might be a mythical leader, he is thought to be the dude who conquered the Portuguese at one of their bases and made that into Jakarta, which is the capital city. The current president of Indonesia is Joko Widodo. I probably said that wrong. According to my family's friends in Indonesia, he's a pretty cool leader. He was born on the 21st of June, 1961, and has been in office since 2014. <laughs> Hello, saya tidak suka makan kebab anjing. Apakah kamu? That's Bahasa Indonesian or Indonesian language for Hello, I do not like to eat dog kebab. Do you? The Indonesian language can be pretty tricky at first, but after learning and speaking it for a while, you get the hang of it. I've learned Bahasa since year one up until late last year when I moved schools and I still find it pretty tricky. Now, let's locate Indonesia on a map. Ready? It's right here. As you can see, Indonesia is close to Malaysia and Singapore. Indonesia's shores are graced by the Indian Ocean. It is about 2,544 kilometers from Australia. Indonesia is a developing country and isn't wealthy at all. In an island called Pulau Baru, most citizens are below the national poverty line. Animal farming is the main source of income. In Australia, we have four seasons, summer, autumn, winter, spring. But in Indonesia, they only have two seasons, wet season and dry season. This is because Indonesia is closer to the equator and thus the sun is at around the same angle each and every day. When you think of Indonesia, you probably think of Bali. Admit it, it's true. Cities like Kuta, Denpasar and Semenyak are full of bogans, drinking, becoming a bright pink from the sun and saying, Yeah, hon, this is bloody bliss I've never seen culture like this before. And so naturally, it is smarter to stick to the rural parts. When you go to these parts of Bali, you can go to places like Ubud and Lotondur. These places have real culture, such as food markets. And if you travel a bit further east into the mountains, you can see 700 year old still lived in villages where giant buffaloes roam the dirt, roam the dirt paths and small children run through the houses with their friends. Mount Agung is beautiful and there are lots of ancient temples you can walk through. The areas around here are also gorgeous to stay. Since I mentioned ancient temples and 700 year old villages, you can probably guess that this culture is amazing. It is. Full of artists and festivals, Bali is a great place to see. Unlike the rest of Indonesia, Bali is mainly Buddhist. Every traditional style house has its own mini temple and usually it has an outdoor bed on a bale, which is an Indonesian pagola, upon which a married couple will sleep on their first night. As well as that, when a family member dies, they are left on that bed until the cremation. The Indians brought their Hindu beliefs to Bali a long time ago. One goddess who I think is interesting from Hindu belief is Saraswati. 
goddess of wisdom, learning, creative arts and purity. She is celebrated on Saraswati Day, which is one of the Balinese Hindu festivals. She is often depicted as sitting on a lotus, which symbolises knowledge, truth and light. Next to her legs, you may notice a white swan, which is a sacred bird in Hindu religion. According to mythology, if you offer a swan milk and water, it will drink the milk and leave the water. This is said to resemble differentiating between good and bad. Now, let's see if my dog can differentiate between good and bad. Okay, which one? Oh, oh, he chose the milk. He chose the milk. So does this mean my dog could become the next sacred bird or just animal? I think that Indonesia has the best food in the world. It is rich, spicy and flavoursome. When I travel to Indonesia, I love to go to a warung, which is a traditional style restaurant. And my absolute go-to dish is to serve myself some rice in a basket lined with paper. And to order some perkadel, which is mashed potato mixed with spices, chili, corn, sometimes meat, or just anything you want. It's then made into a ball again and fried. Now, I'm gonna try making some perkadel so that I can experience mortal paradise and I might even bring it into school. People have been living in the island of Bali for over 4,000 years. So yeah, there's quite a lot of history. In 1906, the Dutch intervention happened in Bali. The Dutch intervention was a sad time when the Dutch military killed over 1,000, majority was civilians. Among the many killed were the Balinese rulers of Badung, their children and their wives. It was a very sad time for the Balinese during the sixth Dutch intervention. The traditional clothing in Indonesia is awesome and amazing. First of all, let's talk about the female clothing for temple visitings and ceremonies. The headpieces reach extremely high on occasion, but not usually. Young girls often wear temple clothes very similar to the woman's. I was lucky enough to borrow a simple set of temple clothes from our friend's daughter when we went to visit him and he took us to a temple. It can feel tight at first, but you get used to it. Next up, men's clothing for temple visitings and celebrations. Although slightly a blander colour palette than the females, the men's outfit is still just as interesting. With a sarong made with batik, a traditional dyeing method such as this and this, a white collared shirt and a simple short headdress, the men's clothing is quite different to the females. In Indonesia, you can find a lot of rare animals. You can find the Komodo dragon, the Anoa, which is the smallest buffalo apparently, the Sumatran tiger, which is very endangered. You can find peacocks, Sunda rhinoceros or Javan rhinoceros. And unfortunately, locals hunt them and sell them to collectors. You can find the orangutan, or as they say in Indonesian, orang utan, which means person of the jungle. The kijang, which is a type of deer. Sea turtles. You can also find the tarsius tarsia, which is a small primate with big eyes. Independence Day is the largest national celebration in Indonesia. It is held on the 17th of August every year and students in school get to play games all day. Independence Day is the day when the Indonesians declared independence from the Dutch. Indonesia's main export partners are Japan, the US, Singapore, China, South Korea, India and Malaysia. Their main import partners are Singapore, China, Japan, Malaysia, US, South Korea and Thailand. Indonesia is lucky enough to have lots of natural things to export such as oil, natural gas, tin copper and gold, crude oil. They mainly import machinery and equipment, chemicals, fuels and food. The Java men lived one million years ago on the island of Java. Their official name is Homo erectus erectus and they're really old and I've heard somewhere that they were really small. 
In Indonesia, they have one of the rarest volcanoes in the world. It's so rare because it has blue flames. Even the lava is blue. This is because of the sulfur. A traditional form of music in Indonesia is gamelan. I learned to play it a few years ago, but I'm still really suckish. Wow, we now I really want to go to Indonesia again. Hmm. Romeo, up for a trip? Let's go catch that flight. Oh, wait a second. There's rabies there. And anyway, you can't bring dogs to Indonesia. Oh, Romeo, you better take off your coat. No more traveling.